Clemson has hired their new offensive coordinator, Andy. Now, remember, they lost both of them. Tony Elliott, of course, took the uh, Virginia job. That was the OC. And the defensive coordinator, Brent Venables, who was there for what seemed like forever, uh, went back to Oklahoma as the head coach after Lincoln Riley left. So the new offensive coordinator for the Clemson Tigers will be Brandon Streeter, who played at Clemson from 1995 through 1999 and has been on the Clemson coaching staff as a quarterbacks coach and recruiting coordinator, and then was the passing game coordinator for the last two seasons since 2015. He's been there for quite some time. Before that, uh, he was a GA at Clemson in 2004 and 2005. But aside from that, Charleston Southern, uh, Liberty, and Richmond. He only knows that part of the world. He's only really worked under Dabo as far as a big-time college football experience goes. So they move him up. He was the quarterback's coach, of course, for Trevor Lawrence, for Deshaun Watson, etc. So, like, maybe good things, but he was also the quarterback's coach uh, this past season. And that did not work out well with DJ. Now, I tend to believe a lot of that has to do with the offensive line, etc. But uh, but also, it, 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 the offense was not good this year. It just was not good. On defense, they now have co-defensive coordinators, and both of them hired from within, hired from inside the department. They are bringing in, let's see, Wesley Goodwin, who was an off-field analyst, uh, an off-field staffer. And five days ago, there were articles out about how, yeah, this is going to be awesome. They're going to move him to an on-field role, and he deserves it because he's worked so hard. So he's going to be the linebacker's coach and the co-defensive coordinator. Like, what are we talking about? And the other First code, field job in, in college football. Just unbelievable. As Co-DC. <laughs> he doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. It's unbelievable. The other co-DC is Mickey Kahn, who, uh, who actually played at Alabama with Dabo Sweeney. He was a high school coach at Grayson High School from 2000 through 2015. And then he was a defensive quality analyst in 2016 with Clemson. And for the last four seasons, he was the, I take that back, 2017 through 2020, he was the safeties coach. And then he was the safeties coach and the special teams coordinator this past season. So he is moving up to a co-DC role and he will continue to coach safeties. I am so curious because big time college football programs don't just hire up from within, right? Right. That's not that's not a typical thing that you see, but but can it work? Like I I think yeah, you and I have talked about this endlessly. It feels like can you promote a person to the point of failure? And I think that you can. Now, obviously, well, I don't think the, you just can. I think the majority of people do. Yes, they get and, promoted to a point of failure. The major we the don't know about these people guys yet, are wildly right? incompetent at many 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 jobs is because, and then the reason we as individuals have a lot of stress on ourselves is because we got promoted to a point of failure. Yeah. But we just don't call ourselves failures because that sounds bad. But if you're struggling to keep up at your job, but you were a rock star at your last job, that should probably tell you something. Yes. Yes. So this is, and and maybe there was something to be said about Tony Elliott being an offense coordinator. You know, that's not to say that he was awful. But obviously, when you've got Trevor Lawrence as your quarterback, you can look really, really good. When you got to develop a young guy, eh, who knows, right? So, obviously, the offense did not work this year. Well, and he was um, a co-OC for a lot of those years, too. Yeah, with Jeff Scott. Yeah, with Jeff yeah. Scott, for sure. And Jeff Scott's been really good since he's left there. So, well, I don't I don't know about all that. Uh, the USF has not exactly done, done great things yet. But they are improving. <laughs> they have at least improved. So that's a step in the right direction. But, all right, what all right, what did the offense at Clemson do when Jeff Scott left? Let's look at it that way. With the one year with Trevor Lawrence was pretty good. They still made it to the playoff, but they got smoked yeah. by Ohio State. That was more of a defensive thing than offense. And Tony Elliott didn't even get to coach. I don't know. I don't know. That Clemson didn't score in the second half. So well, No, but remember Tony Elliott wasn't even there to call plays because he was out with COVID. So That's right. No, that was It's still Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of the year before. So, yeah, this was yeah. This was a weird, a weird situation. I am very curious. You're talking to somebody who knows a lot about mismanaged uh, staff. Okay. You're right. talking to somebody whose team has made really bad hires and just thought, we've got so much talent here that it doesn't matter who's coaching them. 
And so we made really piss poor hires two years back to back. And, at, and it turns out it does coordinator matter. Coordinator spots. <laughs> and one of those was a blue chip hire. Doesn't yeah. matter. It just doesn't matter. If you miss on these things, it's going to set your program back four or five years and it's going to cost Dabo his job. I hope Dabo is enjoying being loyal because it's going to cost him his job. Look, it cost Les Miles his job a long time ago because he wouldn't fire his OC because it was his best friend. It's going to cost Dabo. Because I, I don't I don't think this is gonna work at all. I think at if, all. if Dan Radakovich is still the AD there, I don't believe that this happens. I no, think I that they sit down and, and they have a conversation and say, Okay, we are one of the the top five programs in the country right now. In order to right maintain now. that, we must well, continue this trajectory. We must go out and, and yeah. look at other things, right? The um, the problem is is your top five right now. After next year, you could be struggling to be top 30. Yes, it's entirely possible. Uh, there's there is a world where they, you know, drop back down 8 and 4, 7 and 5, somewhere along there, their backup quarterback uh entered the portal. They've got a good one coming in, but again, it, all the recruits in the world eventually you will get beat. Yes. Like you will lose games that you're not supposed to. It happens week in and week out. Well, and it don't matter how good your co- your, your your quarterback is if you can't protect them. So seeing that with DJ, I don't think DJ is the problem. I, I don't think DJ is a great quarterback, but I think DJ in 80% of other systems across college football would be substantially better than he is right now. That is a glaring indictment on a the quarterbacks coach and B the offensive coordinator that just got promoted to another job. So like that's, that's strange for me. I don't, I don't know that you can make this higher if you are not, you know, the lead voice in the room, right? Dabo. Oh, no, he, like, he is the lead voice. D- yeah, Dabo's going to make the, I guarantee you, Dabo's going to make the athletic director higher. Entirely possible. Well, no, the they're going to call him and say, say, it, who do you want? They hired from within for the, uh, for the AD job, didn't they? I don't know that it's been oh, officially yeah. named, but I don't think they've announced it, but yeah, I think they are, which, and, and who do you think controlled that? Entirely possible. Don't I mean, get you, a national a search. We're not hiring somebody outside of here. We're hiring somebody who I already have control over. It's 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 interesting. I want to see how this plays out. So I'm I'm glad that he did it so that I can at least see. Look, I, I know but, I like to take pop shots at Dab all the time. I'm going to tell you that I've never thought he was a great quarter coach. That what he has built is unbelievable. But every year that Brett Vittables was there, they were awesome. Every year he's not, they were not. Okay, so. Use the word built very loosely because my team, LSU, every year, Dave Aranda was there. We were great. Not just good, great. And every year he wasn't, we weren't. So yep. let's just be real careful before you think what DC can't be that important because there are people that will tell you that Dave Aranda was the grown up in the locker room at LSU for a long time. And Dave Aranda had a lot of pull and a lot of influence even over other coaches and and things. People looked to him when chaos was happening. I assure you that Vittables had that kind of pull and influence being there for as long as he was. Yes. Yes, 100%. Vittables was the coach of the defense. He was the head coach over that department. That's the way yes. that, that worked. You're bringing in you know, younger guys. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that it'll be the same. Uh, you you let you let the head coach get a little too involved, and things may change. Things may change. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.